Namaste. Uh, I know many of you here, so I was not prepared. And I actually don't even know the uh, the objectives of meet and greet, actually. So when Sujit, I had promised Sujit I will come participate. Uh, and I said, okay, this time I have to come. You know, I have to go. It's been too long. And this community service of being a social activist is also like a passion. And once you're in, for so many years you're in, and you're out, you have a different passion. So I've been pretty much busy. I wanted to namaste all the you know, seniors. Here I see, which I didn't get. And hi to Nancy, she's taking a picture. Um, I am talking today about, we, we, I don't know how far the community has developed so far. When I was working, I can relate back, two, three years ago, very simple, uh, but very complicated issue that I always talk with Sujit. You know, when we talk about nonprofit, right? It's very easy to form organization, but nonprofit compliance, what it is, you know? Many, all organizations, they know that they have to register organization. So they have somebody to do 501C, they have somebody to register for uh, the State Corporation Commission. So there are the two things. So when pe you have people doing that, you the, the, the president or executive committee, they don't even know. You know, what contents in this information, what are the requirements? So my point is, you know, when you have an organization, we are, as a Nepali community, we're growing a lot. So when we do program, we have to, of course, everybody knows, even Google, what are the compliance for uh, non-profit, you'll already know that. These are very simple, yet there is a very, very, you know, very um, uh, much need in the community that we ask them to go back and understand that process. So we have a bylaws. Let's just start from a simple bylaws, right? So every organization have a mission, vision, objectives, and then you, why you are forming organization, you have a, a roles of officer, who is going to be president, president, treasurer. So bylaws uh, explains you detail about the role of the president, role of the vice president, because you have to write it. Role of the treasurer, right? And the, what is the role of secretary, M member, general member, honorary member, a special member, a student member, categories of member. So you also have that uh, uh, of the, the role and uh, duties of the officer. So when we create a bylaws, whoever has time to go create a bylaws or read through bylaws will know that you cannot have a bylaws without conflict of interest. So what happens if uh, the members have a conflict of interest in the same program? What does the bylaws say about it? So one thing that I see very important is the conflict of interest. The other thing most of us forget is what happens to the organization at the time of the dissolution. So when organized dissolves, are we going to leave that asset, uh, you know, all the money or whatever is there, there, or what the law says? Actually, the law says that when you're dissolving organization, you can give those property, asset, everything to the organization very close to the mission. So in the, in, the, in the long run, when I was working with community that I also um, figured it out, you know, and the minors of the meeting, that bothers me still today. Where do, we don't have anybody to even take a minors of the meeting. When your bylaw says that every meeting, you have a minors of the meeting, you need to circulate those meetings. You need to discuss in upcoming other meeting, advantage, disadvantage, what we discussed, what was, uh, you know, achieved. You're supposed to discuss that on the, uh, when you take the minor. So, and, and also Nancy, you know, when you work for the ANWA with the CFC requirement, like you cannot ask money with everybody. The federal government cannot give you money, fund. The federal government has to give it to the fund to somebody CFC approved. Nancy worked so hard to get ANWA CFC approved at one time. So all this small requirement looks very simple, but very critical. So the treasurer's role, role of the treasurer, you know, the money, in, incoming money, outgoing money, transparency is the main that IRS is looking for. So you know, very little, little details. And what I have noticed all these years when I come back and I'm working with the big umbrella at the Homeland Security is like, you know, man, we missed that boat. We missed that boat of doing a program. I did almost almost 500 program, but I never paid attention to my to uh, you know the targeted audience. Who are we doing program? We, I, we never did a need assessment. Is there a need of the for the program? Who are the targeted group? Please, they are doing a homework from one to like you know very very long term, short term project, long term goals, short term goals, intended target. What is the assessment? 
you know, what are the objectives of the program, all these needs, things needs to be uh, very, very much worked out in detail in order to, be, to have a successful program. The one thing we, know, we notice is uh, in the community, we advocate a lot. We advocate a lot, we talk and talk and talk and we go home because there is no follow-up process. So it may be a good idea, idea that we start doing as a coaching. Coaching means, okay, we are uh, coaching a, a, the individual and saying that what are we intended for next, like next point? What is the deadline? I want you to do this, this, this in certain date. You know, be, be sure on the date what we're going to achieve. Basically, what we're looking at is planning in our head. First of all, we need to have a very cause-oriented. You know, I, I really don't go to any program where my cause doesn't allow me. I'm not coming to program when Sujit calls me or you call me or other calls me. If I feel that cause, I'll be there. So don't force me to come. I'm not your number. That should be the, the main focus for because you are believing in cause. I believe in ANS because ANS is the oldest organization. So I believe in ANS. I'm here. You know, so we need to be very focused on what we want and what kind of program. And you know, one thing I, I got really uh, keep me thought is like, who are we serving? I think Omraji said to me once time, who are we serving? And that's the very question. You have a one person as a trainee and you have a 10 volunteers. Does that make it, you know, any sense? So we have to have a layout of the program, looking at the bylaws. And many times people will uh, prepare a bylaws, they register a 501C, and then later on, what they do is they, they, they even forget what their mission are, their vision are. So the J JWI professor once said very clearly that whenever you are confused, go back to your bylaws and read and see why did you open that organization? That makes sense. Because you go back and you say, okay, my organization scope is just to be cultural. So I will only stick in culture. I don't have to put all my hands on everywhere. So it, this, this stuff looks very simple, but very, very, um, you know, very, when IRS goes to your house, I have seen many organizations. The IRS has visited their office looking for people to show the audit, show the information, what are you doing? Then, you know, with the Homeland Security, that I have learned every day with the, like money laundering is a big, 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 big issue. So money laundering, 501C, if you are not transparent, how you're going to justify that money, where it is coming from and what is it? So and if you have any question, concern, let me know. But other than that, I already have this much educated audience who doesn't need to know what is bylaws, but uh, I, I actually didn't know the number of us. So my is like, who are my audience? I need to know so I can prepare, you know, that kind of thank you Sujit for calling I'm happy to be here after many years thank you, thank you.